Man, what a long winter. The nice weather was finally here. So I brought my friends over to help with some yard work. Good guys, always seem to have a good time doing just about anything. I especially remember Bill as having a really good sense of humor. <laughs> He's always joking around. Anyway, it was a nice day, you know, lots to do. Landscaping, staining the deck, raking the lawn, pruning trees, taking the outdoor furniture out of our shed. Ah, uh, that old shed. We looked at it and just shook our heads. We decided, time to go. It had had its time. My friend Johnny went home and grabbed his tractor, loaded it up, and brought it back. We were darn ready to get rid of that old thing fast. Anyway, before we moved the shed, Bill went up on top to move some tree branches and overhead wires. But no one remembered to check about those power lines. I guess it never occurred to anybody. So we handed Bill a 2 by 4 as he stood on top of the shed and, assuming that wood is not a good conductor of electricity, he used the 2 by 4 to raise the wires. Well, it's hard to say, but it didn't even look like his arm touched it. Well, when Bill's 2x4 touched the wires, Bill got electrocuted. Bill was thrown clear or jumped clear, I, I don't know, but still he got burnt pretty bad, received a darn severe shock and, and was taken to hospital. His arm needed to be split open to relieve the pressure and promote better cell growth. Ugh, sad. I always watch myself around power lines now. The human body is a good conductor of electricity. Voltages of any level can have an effect on you. Even small amounts of current can kill. Electricity can cause death by contraction of chest muscles, causing suffocation. Also, temporary paralysis of the respiratory system can occur long after the victim has been separated from the power source. The heart can stop. Death results as vital organs are starved for oxygen. The heart, unable to recover, begins to die. The brain, the most sensitive of the organs, begins to die in about three minutes if denied oxygen. Body tissue can be so badly burned that shock can kill the victim. Working around power lines can be safe. It requires planning, knowledge, and application of the regulations and the cooperation of the local power authority. You should know how to operate equipment safely in these situations and keep a healthy distance from the lines at all times. Regulations states that for unqualified persons, the minimum distances that must be maintained from high voltage lines for personnel, material, Equipment and machinery are 900 millimeters or 3 feet to lines carrying up to 750 volts. 3.6 meters or 12 feet to lines carrying 751 volts to 100,000 volts. Between 100,001 and 250,000 volts, increase the distance to 5.2 meters or 17 feet. 250,001 to 345,000 volts requires a minimum distance of 6.1 meters or 20 feet. If you have any doubts as to the limits of approach, contact the power company for guidance and advice. Always make sure you're a safe distance from electrical sources when you're working. If the minimum clearance can't be maintained, contact the power company who will guard and erect visual warnings, reroute, or if necessary, de-energize the line. You should always have a safety washer standing by who is a good judge of distances and can direct traffic and equipment away from lines. Dump trucks, while moving with their boxes up, are particularly at risk in urban areas. Scaffolding should be erected keeping in mind the required distances from power lines. And don't attempt to fall trees near power lines. Contact the power company for advice, particularly when working near unstable or damaged poles. In most areas, power is delivered by overhead lines. Many new neighborhoods and large commercial installations use underground wiring. This replaces the potential hazard of overhead power lines with special hazards when any excavation or drilling work is done. The location of all underground power lines and utilities must be located before work starts. 
Underground lines may be protected by signage or visual warnings. You may encounter a plank buried above the line and or a bright yellow or red ribbon buried one to two feet below the surface. If you come across these or other warnings, stop immediately and contact the power company before continuing. But remember, these signs may not be there and there may be no record of them on plans or schematics, or they may be incorrectly marked. The responsibility is yours to check with the power company to make sure the area is safe before starting any groundwork. Even though you are working outside the minimum distance requirements, equipment failure or loss of control can cause contact. If this happens, stay on the machine. It's generally the safest place. It's important to understand why it's safer to stay on the machine during an electrical contact. It involves the flowing of electricity from source to ground. Electricity will always take all paths to ground. Anything can be a conductor. Even dry wood or plastic will conduct a current if the conditions are right. But how well it conducts electricity affects its ability to hurt you. For example, a bird on a wire. When a bird lands on a single strand of wire, it is at the same voltage as the wire and will suffer no harm. There is no path to ground. However, if the bird is large enough to touch another wire, the cross arm, or the top of the pole with its wing when it flies away, it will create a path to ground and will be killed. If contact with the power line is made, a path to ground is established. If you are the operator of a machine that contacts a power line, move the machine to break contact. If the machine cannot be moved and there is no immediate danger from fire, stay where you are. Keep in mind that the ground for quite a distance around the machine will be energized. Warn others to stay back a minimum of 10 meters or 33 feet and tell someone to call the power company. If a fire starts and you have to get off the machine, never step onto the ground while still in contact with the machine. The object is to ensure your entire body clears the machine and that you'll land on your feet without stumbling. Keep your feet together and take short hops or shuffle a minimum of 10 meters or 33 feet. Separating your feet can cause the electricity to pass through your body because it will give the electricity another path to flow through. Power lines can be dangerous. Working near or under them requires knowledge, caution, and common sense. Know the regulations and work carefully around power lines. Electricity travels at the speed of light. That doesn't leave much time to get out of the way. It only takes an instant to create a bright arc.